Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio, and today we're painting this little character, this is Boss Snickrot for the Orcs. One of the only sneaky Orcs, really, in a 40k, or at least one worth mentioning. Um, really interesting fig, even though he's made a fine cast, which uh, makes him a bit of a pain. So I've started him with a black primer here, and this time I've oversprayed him with a bit of the grey primer by Vallejo as well. This is to add a, a pre-highlight to him, because uh, we really want to accentuate the light effects on this and uh, bring him up with the xenophil highlighting. So straight over the pre-highlight I'm going to start with a Zandri Dust. Now you've seen me do camo patterns in different ways, I decided I'd do it a bit different this time. And of course I'm using the airbrush here guys but you can do this with a paintbrush if you check out the Blood Axes video, exact same thing but it's blue camo so it, it can be done with an airbrush. And I want to end up cutting down a lot of this uh, for the airbrush part because this video, as you can tell, is probably quite long by the time it's finished. So after the Zandri dust, we're going to use a uh, Carrick stone. This is going to add a, uh, another highlight and we're just going to try and hit all the edges of everything. I'm using a 45 degree angle, so if you're using an airbrush, that's what you want to do. If not, you just want to glaze up uh, with a wet palette, usual techniques. The idea here is we're going to do all of this painting put mask all on, go over it again and then peel it off to reveal a already highlighted camo pattern and at this point now I'm going to speed up this video a lot until we've done with this camo pattern. Right, here we go. Next is Army Paint a Strong Tone with a bunch of medium because we want to um, make sure those blends are in there nicely and we also want to add some depth back in because the airbrush uh, clouds it up quite a bit. You want to put medium in there just to stop it clouding, you want a nice smooth result. Next, I'm using Carrick Stone again. Going back over those uh, highlights and bringing them back in. As you can see, the uh, bag is now a lot dirtier than it was before. Which is kind of what we're going for with, a, with an orc character. Next up, one of my personal favorite favorites, Rakar Flesh. Making sure we uh, hit the top of the knees and the feet there. We're also going to do the same on the bag. This was the colour I was aiming for as that's going to act as our cream camo colour because we're doing a forest forest camo for this one. Just because I thought that would look interesting. Then I'm using Army Paint a Strong Tone through the airbrush so there's no brush marks and anything else. So it will just go on nice and smooth and uh, there'll be no hard lines anywhere and I'm just painting the underneath of that with the Army Paint a Strong Tone really watered down. And again, another layer of Rakar flesh to bring on those final highlights. And that will be it for the uh, cream colour. You can do all that with a paintbrush, except you won't have to do as uh, many layers. You probably just glaze that up. It shouldn't be too difficult to follow the same sort of pattern. And obviously you're going to want to varnish this model before we put any mask on it so it doesn't uh, pull the paint off. So uh, we're going to put some mask on using a uh, cocktail stick, not a brush. I did find a technique later on for this that worked really well. Now you put on in quite a large blob in the center and then you pull it away with the uh, spike of the cocktail stick. And it makes nice sporadic patterns and it works really, really well for this camo effect. But I'll show you a better version of this later on. We want to cover about a quarter of the backpack in mask on in random patches to make this look right. Once that's done, we are now onto our greens, and I'm going to start with a war boss green. The reason I started with the war boss green and not a warg flesh is because I've already got highlights on the underneath there, and I, want, I was hoping they would show through, meaning I didn't have to do as many layers of highlights, but I will do anyway, because I wasn't quite happy with the result. Now we're using warg flesh. And a little bit of black and we're just gonna go from the underneath and spray some extra shading in there because obviously we've had them all different colors and now the pre-highlight has been lost so we're just gonna add this in this is black by model air uh, don't use primer for this because it's a bit too thick and when you pull the mask all off it will tear bits of the paint off that you don't want pulling off 
Now we're going back to the uh, war boss green. Make sure we uh, re-highlight. So we've, we've now got our shades in the underneath and we've got a bright highlight at the top. Now we're adding Strachan green into there to make things a, uh, a little bit brighter. Because uh, I attempted this before and the first time I did it, I, the greens were a little bit too dark. So by the time the model was finished, his light skin contrasted too much. But this is a nice bright green and we're going to put washers on it so it's not too bright. But you want a nice bright start if you're going to put washers on. Now we're mixing Army Paint a green tone with no oil. That's what we're going to use for a wash. It's a 50-50 mix. We're going to pull, pull that down into all the recesses, same as we did everything else. Really simple stuff. We're going to keep following these same steps for all these colours. Next, to bring that green up to the colour that I want it, I'm using Scale 75 Dead Flesh, which gives a, a really nice muted sort of bright green it's sort of a lighter green but it's a I like to go muted when I'm highlighting things so it looks like the lights hitting it and taking the color out it gives a nice effect and we're gonna do that across the backpack and obviously across all of his uh, trousers and everything else now this is where I uh, figured out that technique and I'm hopeful, hopefully I'll be able to show you this uh, technique in practice so what you wanted to do here was pick off the last mask or which I didn't do uh, then varnish it and I paid for it in the end with the result uh, but this is the technique I was telling you about I'm going to put a nice blob on and then just pull the mask off from that blob around this will also make it easier to pull it off later on because there's quite a large blob in the middle that's quite thick it's easier to get a cocktail stick in and pull those off now when it comes to the amount of mask oil you put on the green we want about 50% of the uh, the camo pattern to be green still so we want to cover about 50% of that <clears throat> dryad bark was then used to start painting the um, browns into the legs it's a good base for that see the technique I should have done was I would put the mask all on for the brighter colors and the green and then you peel them off varnish it put more mask all on over those two and then paint it again that way you won't pull any of the paint off because there's so many layers and the mask all sticks to the mask all through the paint and I had problems with it being pulled off next is beige brown beige brown by model color which again uh, you can tell I'm going for a more muted palette I wanted snake rock to look like some kind of jungle fighting orc this time uh, instead of blue camo or desert camo so I've gone for basic military colours, uh, which is why the model colour range is uh, really useful for this one. Of course next up, to add the depth into that, is um, Agrax Earthshade. And it makes the beige brown a little bit more orange, but uh, I didn't really have a problem with that, I thought that looked okay. Plus I'm going to keep adding more colours over the top of it, just made it a little, look a little bit more rich. And I'm going to bring that back up again with beige brown by monocolor. Focusing on all those uh, top areas now. Obviously the airbrush cone is doing most of the blending here for me. Most of the colors exactly where I'm aiming and the rest of the color is just fading out towards the bottom. And the next color is brown sand by monocolor. As, as I was saying, model colour do a great range for uh, bolt action figures and, and things like that, so you can get a really nice military look and a really good military colour set. And after this we'll do the same thing, or what we should do is uh, peel all the mask all off again and varnish it and then put the mask all back on over those colours you want to save. Start with the uh, colours you want to save and then add the rest of the pattern in. You'll see how much of the model you've got left to paint. And it should be a lot less now because we're down to the black. And on the camo pattern, black really barely shows up at all. It's like an eighth of the um, pattern. So this is just game air black. Don't use prime, it's too thick for this. Um, and you'll end up pulling off bits of your paint. 
because it makes a bonded layer between the, the mask skull and the rest of the model. Now we're going to use black grey by model colour and I think this is a really good highlight for any black. It's got no real colour to it, it is just a pretty muted grey if anything, it's got a little hint of the green to it and uh, that works really well for this military colour scheme that we're doing. I would advise building and painting this model in sub-assembly, uh, that right arm was a, a huge pain, uh, kept getting in the way and also the head, it's really hard to get under there and paint his uh, jewellery and his neck and everything else. After that we're going to use grey by Model Air and I'm, then we're pretty much done with the camo for now guys. So I hope I do manage to shorten that all down for you and now we can just crack on with the rest of the video. Like I was saying, you can easily do this with a paintbrush instead. Then uh, we peel off all our mask on. As you can see, we've got a, a very decent camo pattern, at least for the trousers. The trousers came out okay, but that right shoe there, you can see where I've peeled off loads of the color. Um, and it's gone back down to the base because I've layered the mask all over itself, um, which was a mistake, so don't do that. Just peel it off, put some new mask all on and then put the extra bits of mask where you want to save the pattern. I'll try this again at some point and I'll be a much better technique. I decided then that the uh, leathers would be done in a Rhinox hide. I'm going back to a more traditional sort of leather colour that you'll have seen me do a few, more, a few times before. Which will be a Rhinox hide and we'll build it up using Gorthor. Could be dryad bark if you want dryad bark, but um, I wanted to put a bit more colour into this as I've clearly made all my colours rather muted. I wanted to just brighten it up a bit, put a touch of a, a warmer colour in, so went for the rhinox hide rather than the dryad bark. And at this point, I've uh, completely wrapped Snick Rock uh, bottom half in a weird tunic looking thing, which is basically a finger from a latex glove wrapped around. Um, so we are now have Snick Rot in some weird dress, maybe that's why he sneaks around a lot, I don't know. But his skin is now started with Demonet Hide by Games Workshop. Those that follow the channel a lot can probably guess that that's what I'd be using for this, as a base. But then we're going to switch it up and we're going to go to Resurrection Flesh by Scale75. And start highlighting all those muscle tones and the majority of the model to be honest we're not going to leave much of this purple showing but we do intend to leave it showing as we're going to add washes and things that are going to dirty it up and uh, make it look more lifelike i did rather enjoy painting his skin um, just trying some new color techniques plus i'm still trying to find a color for my orc army now we're going to use harvester flesh by scale 75 and highlight all of the resurrection flesh that we've just done. Remember we're going for xenophil highlighting with this particular character so most of it is a, either a 45 degree angle with the airbrush or straight down. Try not to highlight that back where the spine is too much because his bag does hang over that. It's best to dry fit this and you can uh, see where things go. Now once that's done, we're going to use light grey green by Model Air and I'm going to thin it down a lot and it's basically going to be like a glazed wash. And as you can see there's still little bits of purple showing through because we don't want to drown that out. And then we're going to add this in and it's going to make all that underneath look shaded and multi-tonal uh, like skin should be. You could always do it the other way around and start with a light grey green and then you know glaze up. It's completely up to you, but this is just how I did it. Now we're going to go back to the Harvester Flesh, plus a little bit of Moonray Flesh by Scale 75. And I'm switched to the Wet Palette now, so we're back to our traditional style of painting, just glazing that up. And I am aware I completely forgot to airbrush his mask, so I'm going to have to do that by hand. So you'll, you'll see at the end of the video that I'm able to do that by hand and these colours still work. Take your time glazing this skin up because it's a huge feature of this particular character. After that, it is a Thonian Camo Shade by Games Workshop and this is really watered down again. We're only putting the slightest hints of green to his skin because he is the pale skinned orc. Uh, it sort of reminds me of the 
the Grey Prince from Oblivion. The yeah, the Grey Orc Gladiator. He was an interesting Orc character as well. Sort of gave me some some ideas for how to paint this skin tone with the uh, purples underneath and everything. After the Ethonian Camo Shade, we're going to use Cayman Green by Game Color to fill in the mouth because. All these colours are now so muted and dirty looking that it would be weird to have a bright pink mouth. So I thought, let's add a little bit, uh, another touch of green to it. Make his, uh, his entire pigment of his skin is off compared to all the other orcs. So maybe add a little bit of orky colour to it and really carry on those greens that we've got. And after that, it's Steel Legion Drab to be used to start picking out those teeth. Be careful when you're cleaning this model up, there is a little bit of flashing in between the top lip that looks like a tooth and it's not, and I only realised this when I started actually painting it. It's very easy to miss the bits of flashing on this model because it's, it's chock full of detail. After the Steel Legion drab, I'm going to start highlighting those teeth up with just Zandri Dust. Really working towards the uh, just the fronts of the teeth. I want those darker, nastier colours sat in the background that give the mouth more depth. I wanted to give him that sort of monstrous, menacing look. Um, it kind of worked out well. Reminds me of the dirty look of the Lord of the Rings orcs. I decided to black out the rest of the model there as well. Um, this is Sand Yellow by Game Air being used to pick out some more highlights on the tips of the teeth. Anything that's not covered by the lips, somewhere in the middle of the lips, start picking it out with this colour. Yeah, I blacked out the model so you've got something else to look at there. Uh, and it also helps it show up a bit better on camera. Once I've done that, as we work from the inside out so we don't get paint anywhere, we're going to use Demonet Hide again, really watered down. And that's all I really did for the lips. It's so watered down that I just built it up in layers from the bottom of his lips to the center and uh, letting the highlights that we've put in just show through because it's so watered down that uh, they do show through. And you just take your time building that layer up. You can also glaze up from the, in between the chin and the underneath of the lip there. And that'll help make the lip look more natural. Harvest of Flesh and Moonray Flesh again, but this time we're going to have add more Moonray Flesh because we're going to keep highlighting that up. And as you can see, he's uh, getting very pale skin at this point with touches of purple and green. I thought it was an interesting technique using the using the light grey green as a wash. It gives a um, a weird texture, um, like this undertones like um, skin should have. Next is Athonian Camo Shade mixed with a tiny bit of Drushi Violet and that's just going to warm up the uh, skin ever so slightly. And again, we've watered this down a lot. It's also going to be used to blend that lip with the rest of the mouth as well because it's got a touch of purple in it and a touch of green. But again, we're just glazing this on really, really thin and you can start building that into all the uh, muscle depth and recesses. Heavy Khaki by Model Colour was used for the straps for the backpack. I wanted to go for that sort of military backpack and the sort of yellowish green straps that you get on it. Um, wasn't quite happy with this particular colour so I did go over it so it makes a good base for the next colour. But, uh, I'm not used to doing this many military colours on in a single palette so I really had to think about what I was doing. Morning Fang Brown is then used to pick out all the bone parts, as you would expect, because I do that a lot. And if you've seen the other videos where I do bone, you've probably seen this technique before. But I really thought it would uh, set the model off because he's muted and green. And uh, the pale skulls on bright coloured strings, making him look like he's running through the jungle collecting heads, um, would look quite cool. So I decide to water down some Lauren Forest by Games Workshop and start going over the heavy khaki. Now this did start giving me that yellow tone that I wanted uh, because it's got that yellow base uh, so it did work out kind of well. 
You want to be doing these straps on the rucksack as well. That's going to help break up the difference between the camo pattern, the straps, and just make it easier for the eye to pick out all the details. Next up, we're going to start highlighting those with Streck and Green by Games Workshop. As you can see on the backpack, there's a lot of that original Rakar flesh bone colour where I mistakenly pulled off too much of the mask all and I layered it over itself with layers of paint in between and that just pull, pulled off the uh, some of the layers so didn't quite get the result I wanted but I do know how to do it much better now. So you guys can learn from these mistakes that we make. And this is something me and Andy fondly call the toilet water mix which is basically a 50-50 mix of Ethonian camo shade and Agrax earth shade and then you just add some water to it and it looks like nasty toilet water. It's perfect for adding some warm colour into greens or making browns and other things look more dirty. Really good if you use a death guard army. So if you play a death guard army and are painting them, it's really good for enriching your greens. Then go back over those straps again. Now they've got a, a bit of a warmer touch with Strachan Green, which is making it look ever so slightly more yellow at this point, which is kind of what I wanted. Yellowy faded colours and the highlights and uh, just a mute green for the base. And we're almost finished with the straps, I believe. Then we've got one more highlight, and that's Death Guard Green. Just towards all the edges of the straps there to uh, bring them out a bit but it's not going to be an edge highlight. You can edge highlight if you want and then pull the paint in a little bit to get that um, bright colour. But focus that just on the tips of his shoulders really, um, where the light would be hitting because we're still going for the Xenophil highlighting. And that really enriches that whole shape and uh, brings that together. Now off camera, I decided to go over everything with a all the metallic parts I wanted with just a gunmetal by model colour. No, model air metallic, I believe. Just tone those up, add those details in. I didn't think you needed to watch me paint that for too long. Now back to the skulls, and we're going to start highlighting those using the wet palette again with Zandri Dust. You don't have to worry too much about the string that attaches them at the moment. We're going to paint over that with quite a, uh, a rich colour so that, uh, that will cover that up. Just starting from the recesses of the skulls, pulling to the center. And um, I also noticed a bit of flashing on there later on and had to pull that off as well. Then we're going to use an Agrax Earth Shade Wash watered down. We're going to make sure this gets in the gaps of the teeth, uh, around the nose, the eyes, and definitely around the back of the skulls or to the lower parts. That's going to really bring out the uh, depth and make it match the rest of the model. Next, I decided to do the parts on his arm as uh, ropes rather than chains, even though later on I did notice they were supposed to be dog tags. But I wanted this, I had this idea in mind to begin with, and this is X388 by Games Workshop. I wanted to go with that jungle sort of hunter sort of theme, and I thought some ropes would be useful for him as well as the one on his backpack. Um, it was just a colour choice and a design choice more than anything. I stuck with what I was going to do originally and just went for the uh, rope look. Now Zandri Dust again, a lot of Zandri Dust and then we just highlight those skulls back up. We're using less and less paint every time here guys, just picking them out and it's really really thin so you're just glazing these on. We're going to make these quite pale but if you wanted to you could tone them down with a little touch of a Agrax Earth shade or maybe even some grey colours. Now we're going to brighten them up a bit with the Shabti Bone because we're heading towards Ivory. Um, when the, at the point where you get to Ivory, you could, could you know, add some green tones or some black into their eye sockets and some grime running out of them, which is something I'd do if I was going to do this for Golden Demon, which I might do, might get another one, um, do something different. Uh, that's probably what I'd go with. After that, Army Paint a Strong Tone, really watered down. It's worth doing all these layers, guys. They do build up the, uh, the three dimensions of the model. It's leaving little traces here and there, and it really accentuates all those details.
And for the ropes, just to make things a lot easier for myself, I watered down a Rhinox Hide by Games Workshop into a, a wash consistency. And it is rather thin. Um, the point of this is just easier to do it this way than paint it Rhinox Hide and then try and highlight it up with the XV88. This is going to be quicker and smoother, and it's also going to give me the tone that I want. But when using um, when using paints as washers, you really want to make sure they're thin and they're well mixed. Now for the skulls, we're going to use ivory plus a shabti bone. And ivory is a model color, and this is really going to lighten those up. And you're basically going for the top of the bridge of the nose, the eyebrows, round some of the teeth and the sockets now, leaving all those shades and colours that we've done in the recesses. And I believe this is the very last army paint of strong tone. It's always good to just add a, a really thin wash over each layer, that way it, any brush strokes or any bits that don't look right, it helps blend them together in the transition. And it's really simple to do, it's just lots of different layers guys. Next I'm going to start picking out the Rhinox Hide Leather using Gothor Brown because it's, uh, it's been a bit flat for a while. So we're working that up as a glaze towards all the uh, top edges of the leathers around the boots and there's probably a strap or two somewhere on his backpack as he's got a, another blade strapped to that and I decided, I decided to do those in Rhinox Hide and Gothor Brown. Now for the strings and also the rope on his backpack, we're going to use Doombolt Brown because I find myself using this a lot for any palette that's slightly muted or a natural colour. As anything for rope, it just works really, really well. Obviously, you're going to want to be very careful here because we spent a lot of time on these skulls. What you're trying to do is just gently cover all the tops of those strings. Now, XV88 is then used again, and this is how slow it is when you do it with a brush and not the wash way around. And I'm just going to start bringing the, that XV88 all the way up to the tops of the ropes. Um, always good to dry fit parts when you've got them in sub-assembly. That way you can see where the light's supposed to hit and uh, you don't muck up the shading or the highlights anywhere. Brown Sand by Model Color is then used to continually highlight that. And like a peasant, I decided to do a dry brush. Um, it was just easier, this video was taking me a very long time to make. But it, it does, you know, the, the dry brush has its place. Um, usually on surfaces like this, or on terrain, but uh, you'll never usually see me using it. It does enable me to pick exactly the direction I want the highlight to come from and get the job done nice and quick. Now, Agrax Earth Shade is used on the ropes and on the metallics, because we've not done anything with the metallics yet and they just look plain silver. Again, this is like really, this is really watered down. I keep all of them, water, all my washers watered down, so that way if it's not dark enough, I just add another one. It's a good practice to get into, that way you don't muck up as much. Now I decided to glue his backpack on, so we've got a, a good view of what's going on here, and decided that the stick bombs would be done in a brass scorpion. Basically just breaking up all those other silvers, um, like I say, and if I'm going to do this one for a Golden Demon project again, um, I'd take a lot more time on the uh, metallics and everything else. But I spent a, about four days mucking about painting this one for years, and I was just running out of time before the end of the weekend. Um, Talon Sand is, by Games Workshop, is used for the stitches. And I didn't really do much else on the stitches, like I was saying. Time was really running out, this video was getting really, really long, and... Uh, I was supposed to have been finished on Friday, it's Monday at the moment. We do try and schedule our videos properly uh, so they're done within a certain amount of time. Now Warp Block Bronze uh, by Games Workshop is then watered down and used to go over the majority or well, the entirety of the uh, Brass Scorpion. Uh, it's a little bit thicker there than I, I want it. Water it down a bit more, and the idea is the brass scorpion would show through ever so slightly patchy, and then we add washers and more highlights to it, and it gives it a nice metallic look. But a, a worn metallic look, which is really what you want if he's been uh, running through jungle forest. Jungle forest, jungle worlds. Now, 
for the eye lenses, I started with a black, obviously we've got a nice base to work with. Then it's Dark Prussian Blue by Model Color. We're going to start from the base of the, uh, the eye lens and work that Dark Prussian Blue right to the top. As we said in the beginning of the video, we're doing a Xenophil highlighting and that's where we want all our top highlights. Still wasn't happy with the blades and uh, started adding some more null oil to them, toning them down a bit because I believe they're one of his main features as there is a best weapons, I um, can't remember the names of them now. Yeah, I really wanted to tone those down so they looked a lot darker. Now to highlight the ropes that we've done, uh, red leather by model colour is used over the Doombolt Brown. Basically using an overbrush technique here. Uh, I would have liked to have spent more time and really put highlights on those curved parts. I mean, there's, there's no limit to how far you can go on one of these models. You can just keep going, guys, and adding more and more highlights. It's a matter of just how much patience do you have for the model. Oldorf Blue by Games Workshop is then used for the top quarter of the lenses. You want to keep this really thin, just working over that Prussian and uh, black and blending those together. Making sure your brush stops at the very top because you don't want to get blue onto the, uh, the mask piece that we've done. I do apologise if I sound really nasally today, I think I'm getting a cold. Next, I'm going to continue working on these uh, knives and it's model air metallic black, really watered down. We're going to start pulling that into the areas where I think it should be the darkest. Now, if I wanted to do this as a competition piece, I was hoping I'd figure out a way to um, put tally marks all the way down his blades for all of his kills, which I think would be a really nice feature for this model. Uh, but they'd have to look like they were scratched in, so that'd be something interesting worth doing. Model Air Metallic Black Gun Metal is then very softly used to uh, bring up all the highlights on the metallic work again. Now this is all the metallic work, not just the, the blades, because there's not much been done. But obviously I don't want to hit anything that's on the underneath of him. Uh, his shoes, his uh, boots or shoes stand out, so... We're going to highlight the centres of those where the light might catch them. And all the buckles as well, I do start picking those out in the same combination of colours. Model Air Metallic Steel, which you find me using a lot to edge highlight metals. Um, I use this to actually start painting in an extra sharp part to the blade. Just to make it look you know, really sharp, seeing as they're supposed to be uh, very deadly weapons. I can't remember the stats for them now. Are they called Mork's Teeth or something? I can't remember. After that, I'm going to go back to the Brass Scorpion and start re-highlighting the stick bombs. And as you can see, the colour palette's really starting to come together now. Um, nothing's too far away from the original palette that it should be. All the colours are pretty accurate. Um, except that back rope could have used a bit more work. So I'm probably going to... Yeah, I do throw an Agrax on that in a sec. Just throw an, ag <laughs> throw in an Agrax Earthshade on because Agrax wins every time. Got a problem with a model, Agrax Earthshade. Just tone that down because it seemed a bit too bright compared to all the other colours. Don't let it pull too much. Um, but as you can see, that really tones that down. Makes it look like a really dirty rope that's been used a lot. Which I imagine it has. And we're going to use Null Oil again on the blades including over the steel um, steel that we did with model color and as you can see those highlights are now really starting to work and we're really darkening those blades down just letting a few of those highlights show through try and keep in control of this wash you don't want to drown the, uh, the model because it will run down onto his hand and ruin that then Alatic Blue by Games Workshop was used for the about the not even the top quarter, we're looking at like the top eighth of the um, eye lenses now. And then after that, we're going to put a little touch of white onto the tips of it. And we're pretty much finished at this point. I know it's been a very long video. So after I did all that, all I did was go around the camo patterns, especially around his mask and around the edges of the backpack. And I just went around with a very thin line of Rakar flesh, really watered down, allowing those underneath tones to show through so it doesn't look too too stark. I would have changed a few things like uh, the mask hold technique that I put on 
Um, but besides that, it's, it's not too bad of a model. Um, so, I hope you like that video, guys. If you do, maybe consider becoming a Patreon uh, like these guys. This is a special thanks to Lud Wood Ludwig Hofbohr, Rob Paints Models and Warren Brunston, who are Patreons and they help support this channel, uh, which is awesome. They have early access to all of our videos, tutorials and everything else, as well as a few extra goodies, so go check that out. Also, don't forget to check out the links in the description for eBay, uh, Patreon, Facebook and of course the Outpost, which is uh, our affiliate link. If you need any of the paints that are shown in this tutorial or any of the models that we show in tutorials, go check them out. Discounted hobby supplies, uh, you can't lose there, it's like 20-15% off. So definitely go check those out. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and share on Facebook with all your friends because that really helps us out every time. And it's been a long one, thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.